on this one. So if you haven't tried it yet, I encourage you to um, pause the video and maybe uh, give it a go. Okay. Otherwise, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and try to show you a solution. Okay. So what, I, what do I need to do? I need to show that L is regular. Okay. So that means that I need a DFA. So this is, remember, this is only one way to show that L is regular. Uh, but since we're in DFAs, we're going to use the DFA. We need to need a DFA M such that the language accepted by M is L. Okay, so we need a machine M that accepts uh, all the strings and only all the strings in L. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, always the, the best first trick is to actually start writing something. Okay, you sort of start writing Q0 and then you do cases basically. So you know that you can either get an uh, an A or an B in, in this case. Um, so you sort of follow that kind of uh, logic and, and, and hopefully it doesn't get complicated enough so you can, you can uh, get, get your DFA, okay? And by the way, I think there's a typo here. There's actually no V. Um, that, was, uh, that was our bad, okay? Okay, so let's see. Um, I'm gonna write some of the strings that are accepted here. So example of accepted uh, strings. And you'll see that the, this sort of writing, the, doing this technique where you write uh, some small accepted strings is actually gonna help a lot here, okay? So what do we know about uh, the strings that are in, in L? So we know that they, they look like TBU, where, um, so they look like, so if you have a string W and L, it's going to look like T, and then B, and then U, okay? B is just a symbol, okay? And then T is um, a string, a substring of length at least one, okay? And then U is a substring of length at most two. So then what does that mean? That means that you can actually enumerate uh, what you could be. You could be lambda, could be A, could be B, could be AA, and so on until BB, okay? So those are that's sort of what uh, the strings in in, in lambda look in uh, sorry not lambda in L what those strings look like okay okay so um, well the sort of the first third the first component of your string W is actually really easy to model in your DFA you just want a you want a substring that has length at least one okay that means that you want at least one symbol, okay? You want at least one symbol. It doesn't matter if it's A or B, okay? So that means that if you're in Q0, you see any symbol, A or B, then you go to Q1, okay? So that sort of starts off your, um, your T, okay? Then what happens? Then the next thing you're searching for is, is a B, okay? You're, you're looking for a B, right? So that means if you're in Q1 and you see an A, you just loop in Q1. Okay, why? Because um, if you have, for example, A uh, and then A, 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 a bunch of A's, what you're doing is you're just waiting to get a B, right? You're, you're just waiting for, for, for this B over here to happen, okay? So then what happens when you get a B? When you get a B, you move to the next state, Q2, okay? You need a, you need a new state, okay? And then actually what you'll notice is if, if, if you end in Q2, then you should actually be accepted. Why? Because let's say you have a bunch of A's and then B. Well, then this looks like the, 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 the string that you want to accept. Why? Because these bunch of A's, those are like your T. And then your B here is the B in, in, um, in your language over here. So let me erase so I can keep writing over it. The language, the string over here. And then your U, your U is just basically the empty string, okay? That's allowed because um, concatenating anything with lambda gives the anything. And we know here that the length of U is zero. So all the conditions are satisfied, meaning that Q2 could be a final state, okay? So then again, there's two cases that can happen. What can happen? You can either get a B or an A. So the B is actually pretty straightforward. If you, get a, if you get a bunch of A's 
and then let's say a B, and then another B, okay? What do you do? You can essentially assign all of this until the last B as your T, and then this guy, the B, as your symbol B, and again, you can use lambda as U, okay? So what does that mean? That means that if you're in Q2, then you can keep looping the Bs and um, you're still going to accept, right? Okay. The not so obvious one is um, what happens when you get an A, okay? So if you get an A here, well, what are you going to do? Um, well, so let's just, let's just see what kind of strings we can have so far. So let's say we have an A and then maybe a bunch of A's and then a B. And then let's say a bunch of Bs, okay? And then let's say I get an A, okay? Is this also gonna be accepted? Well, actually, yeah, because what I can do is I can take all of this as my substring T, and then the B is going to be my symbol B, and then the U is no longer lambda, it's gonna be A, it's gonna be A. And um, A has a length of one, so we see U has a length of one, which is less than two, so that satisfies, okay? So that what that means is I need to create a new state, Q3, that accepts, um, and where you go to that state once you see an A after a bunch of Bs, okay? So then once you're in Q3, what happens? Okay. Well, again, two things can happen. You can either get a, Q, uh, a B or an A. If you get a B, that's the, the, the sort of simpler version. So let me, let me write another sort of example. Uh, so let's say you have an A, Let's say you get a bunch of A's, you get a B, a bunch of B's, and then an A, okay? And then let's say you get another B, okay? Um, then this is very similar to this case here. Why? Because you can take all of this guy as your substring T. Remember, the only condition on T is that it has at least one symbol. It doesn't tell you what it's supposed to have, right? So you can just say, oh, I, I assign all of this to T. And then my symbol B is, is over here. Um, and then again, I'm going to use lambda here for my U, okay? And then because I can sort of decompose my string in this way, I get that this is an L, right? So what I'm saying basically is if you're, you, you just saw an A, right? You just saw an A and you're in Q3, and then you see another B, then what you do is you go back here, okay? You go back here because now you sort of reset at the moment. So you, you reset as in the B is the, the B in here. It's your B after your T, okay? Because you get a bunch of symbols here. Then if you're in Q3 and you see a B, you go back to Q2. And that B, the B you last saw, becomes the B at the end of your sort of string, okay? Then um, that deals with the half of the cases. The other half is if you get an A, okay? What happens if you get an A? Um, so let me, let me do it over here, okay? So, okay, what are the strings we can have so far? Let's say we have an A. Um, actually, just, just because it doesn't matter, right? Here, this can be an A or a B. Let's say you get a B, and then you get a bunch of A's. Then you get a B, a bunch, of more, a bunch more B's. Um, let's say you get an A, okay? And then I, I'm going to sort of show you that, that what I did with the going back works. So I'm here. I got an A and now I'm, now I'm here. Okay. Now I get another B. So I go back to Q2. I get a bunch of Bs. Okay. So I'm still here. Um, I shouldn't have circled that. Um, then I get an A. So I, I go over here. And now I get another A. So I get my second A. Um, so basically, this is the first time where you have two A's right, right after that B, okay? So is this still accepted? Well, in fact, yes. Why? Because you can take all of this as your substring T. Remember, the only condition on T you want is that it has um, at least one symbol. Clearly, I mean, it has a, a bunch of symbols, right? So it, it, it clearly satisfies that, okay? Then you, you, you want a T, right? So you want a T here and then you want your symbol B. So you have your symbol B here, okay? And then you want a substring U. So now my substring U is AA. U is AA. And the length of U is what? The length of U is two. 
and that is still less than or equal to 2. Okay? So what does that mean? That means that I'm still going to accept L. Uh, sorry, not L. This big boy here. I'm still going to accept the string. So um, I obviously can't, I can't keep the transition back here because then I would be accepting, um, I would be accepting B and then any number of sort of uh, uh, strings after that of any length. But remember, my condition is that U has to have at most two symbols. Okay, so I'm not going to loop here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new state. And because here I've said that this this whole string over here. Um, Oh no, okay, maybe, um, okay, because there's something, okay, sorry about that, because uh, my, my pen uh, died on me, um, okay, and it's, um, of course, it's still dead, so let me just fix, okay, okay, so it works, okay, so what I was saying is, um, this guy, this, this whole string is accepted, okay, so that's why I'm making uh, Q3 to A, uh, Q3, then you see an A, and then you go to Q4. Q4 is going to be a, a, a final state again. Okay. Um, then you're at Q4. Again, two things can happen. And um, as you might have guessed, B uh, occurring is the easy one. Okay. Why? Because uh, remember, you're in Q4 because what ha what says, what's happened is you've seen a B and then two A's. Okay. So let me do a, another simulation. You get a bunch of A's. A bunch of Bs, then let's say uh, you get an A, a B, then you get A, A, and then a B. So now what you do is you set all of this guy, all of this substring as T. This becomes your symbol B, and then you have um, your substring U, which you can use as uh, lambda. U has like less than or equal to 2 because it's 0. So again, this is also going to be accepted. Okay? So, um, and then what you need to notice from this is this case here is very similar to sort of this case here. And it's similar to this case here where I kept resetting back to Q2, okay? So it's no different from before. I'm at Q4, I see a B. So I reset back to Q2. Reset in the sense that now I'm, I'm saying everything before me is going to is going to be absorbed by t and the last symbol i saw which is a b is going to be my b at the end okay then okay um we're almost done actually um if we're at q4 and something uh else happens the only other thing that can happen is you see an a then uh let me let me actually simplify so i get an a so i get a so i'm in q0 just so I, I don't lose you, I get a zero, I, I see a B, now I'm in Q1. I get a bunch of A's, I'm in Q1 still. Then I see a B, okay, now I'm in Q2. Let's say, just for the sake of fun, I see a bunch of B's, I'm still in Q2, okay. Then let's say I see an A, okay, an A, and then another A. So then I'm here, and now I've seen an A, okay. Where do I go? So some of you might think, let me create a new state, okay? But actually, something that, that can actually be even simpler is to notice that what's happened here is, um, if you want, you have this sort of, this substring here is now your T, then you have your symbol B, and now U is your substring here. But now U, the length of U is three which is greater, strictly greater than two, okay? So that means that this is not gonna be accepted, okay? So, I mean, do we think that this should go in a trap state then? Well, no, actually, because you can still save, you can still salvage, basically, um, you can still salvage this string. How? By saying AAA, then maybe, maybe you get another B, okay? So then, what, what the language sees, so now forget the DFA for a second, what the language sees now is it sees all of this as T and this as B, okay? But, but what you need for that is you need the A to, fo to be followed by a B, okay? 
And so if you sort of try to look back at this DFA here, that kind of reminds you of what you saw at the beginning. So you could have B uh, something, then AA, maybe three A's, and then a B. And this would have been accepted as well, because just like picture this as just being the string, then this would have been T. Okay, I should, should be using a different color. So this would be the T, and then this would be your symbol B. Okay, so kind of the same thing happens then. Um, if you see a third A after your B, what you need to do is you just need to reset, okay? So what do I mean by reset? You go from Q4 back to Q1, okay? And what does that do? That does that. So let, let's do a, maybe a, a sample string. So let's say you get an A. Um, let's say A, A, B, A, 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 and then B. So convince yourself that actually this should be accepted. Why? Because... I let everything in here be my T, and then this is my symbol B, okay? So if I trace this through, um, so I'm in Q0, I see an A, then I see an A, I stay here, then I see a B, I go to Q2, right? So now I'm here. Then I see three A's. So I see an A, and then an A, and then another A, okay? But now I still have a chance to redeem myself if I see a B, and that's exactly what happens. I see a B, and I end up in my final state Q2, okay? So, um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I probably know what you're thinking. I agree. This one is, is, is by far the most complicated one in the tutorial, but I thought it was, it was sort of a great example to illustrate how sort of you can kind of manipulate your input string to your advantage to see that it's in the language L. So, of course, as, as always, the solution is here, um, which is it's obviously much neater. Um, if you have any questions about that, just, you know, shoot me an email, and I'll be more than happy to re-explain it, uh, find a different way of explaining it, um, anything 